And now, Malcolm Reed, he's the purveyor, shall we say, of howtobarbecueright.com. Afternoon, Malcolm. Hey, Gerard. How's it going, man? Good, happy Friday. Same to you, man. It's, it's great. Uh, what you got cooking today? Oh, man, you know, it's the weekend, so we got to get something going. I've got some ribs in the fridge, so I'm going to do a little bit of early <laughs> Memorial Day practicing. That sounds great. All right, so May is National Barbecue Month, is that correct? That's right. It's my most favorite month of the year. <laughs> awesome. Well, I like some good barbecue myself. How about you, Will? You like that barbecue? Of course. I just I, I, I don't have the skills to make it. I have to rely on either. others. That's me, too. But we got somebody on the line that knows a little bit about that. All right, so you got some tips, tricks, techniques, uh, anything any wisdom about barbecue you want to share with us today, Malcolm? Hey, well, you know, it's, it's all about really just firing up the grill and, and having a good time uh, cooking some meat. You know, you can't, you can't hurry barbecue. It's one yeah. of those things where you've got to be patient with it. You don't have to get all fancy with your, your cookers and your pits and all that or your seasonings. It's, it's usually just simple flavors with a little smoke and good low temperatures and time. That's all it takes, Gerard. You just got to be, you got to have that patience. Okay. Got to have patience. So if you're hungry, just uh, snack on something else before the barbecue's done. I think that's the, that, that's the message there. That's right. That's, well, what, you know, that's what your side dishes are for. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, so we got Memorial Day coming up. That's always a big barbecue day, isn't it? You know, that's really the first one that, that everybody considers the kicking off the barbecue season is Memorial yeah. Day. So, you know, people are, school's getting out, summertime's getting ready to start up. Those temperatures yep. have climbed up. We're, you know, we're seeing beautiful weather here in Mississippi, all over yeah. the south, and, you know, other parts of the country starting to warm up some. And, and people are just itching to get outside, and that means firing up those barbecue grills. And I think that's what, you know, what makes it special. I mean, everybody knows, you know, Memorial Day, we're, we're celebrating our fallen heroes that have served our country and, and give us this freedom to do, you know, the things that we love to do. And barbecue's one of them. And I think that's what makes it special. Absolutely. Now, what is it, Malcolm, about eating outside? Why does stuff just seem to taste better when you're outside? What's up with that? You know, I don't know, but it's one of those things. You know, it takes me back to a kid. I remember those family barbecues, and, and it's just it, it's always good times, and you're with friends and family, and, and being outside in the fresh outdoors air, you know, it, it, food just tastes better when it's cooked and, and ate outside. I wonder if there's any science to that, you know, that your taste buds just seem to function better when you're breathing the outside air. But it does. It just seems like the same food you eat inside, when you take it outside, it just tastes better. It's uh, just a brighter taste to it. I, you I find the same? I agree. Oh, yeah, I definitely well, agree. We, um, you know, we, we try to eat outside on our back patio as much as possible in the summertime. Yeah. Uh, as long as we stand the mosquitoes, that's where I usually draw the limits. <laughs> when it starts getting dark, we usually go indoors. But, but those, you know, that, that, there's nothing better than sitting outside, having the kids run around, and you know, just enjoying Agreed. enjoying what God's created for us. Absolutely, totally agree. All right, so with this pandemic stuff and everybody everybody being kind of locked down and lots of takeout and it it sort of changed food habits but it looks like we're getting back i think people are itching to get outside and do barbecues and eat well I, you know Big i know barbecues. from my stand, i know from my standpoint we've seen more people than ever starting to cook at home and starting to go outside and wanting to get out of the kitchen. I mean, not everybody yeah. wants to fire up your oven every time you want to cook something, you know, or, or, or the stove. Um, people just like being outdoors and, and, and being able to, to cook something outside, you know, get, get out of that normal kitchen element. Um, you know, a lot of the restaurants are hurting right now because of the COVID, and people are ready to go back to, to some, you know, what was normal to us that we all took for granted before all yep. this mess. But, um, you know, and, and I'm ready for it, too. No lie. We just had our first big competition since COVID. It was Memphis in May last weekend down yeah. on the river yeah. in, in downtown Memphis. And it was, you know, it was a huge event. It wasn't, wasn't as many people there as normal, but we got to have it, and it went off without a hitch, and everybody complied to their regulations. And I didn't hear of one problem. Wow, that that is awesome, and so good to hear. Just getting back to the, the way things were. All right, so do you have any any favorite apparatus 
for smoking and, and barbecuing. Uh, tell us about that if you do. Well, you know, I, I've, when, when I talk to JT, we always go back to that old Weber grill. That's yeah. the one grill that everybody knows. It's an American classic. And I think, you know, pretty much everybody's seen one. If they, they probably own one or two at any time in their life. But that, that round kettle-style grill, you can do so much with that. It's not just for burgers and dogs. You know, you can, you can set that thing up and cook a pork butt on it uh, overnight. You can, you know, cook ribs on it. It can do just about anything. And I think it's just one of the most versatile grills that's ever been made. And, and oh. Weber, don't pay me anything to say that. That's just, <laughs> my, that's just what I think. <laughs> well, a lot of folks like to use the green egg. What do you think about that? Oh, I like green eggs. I have one too on my back porch, and they're fantastic. They're, you know, th those cookers are different because they're ceramic, and that that means it holds heat really, really well. Okay. So you don't need a whole lot of fire in them, and it burns for a real long time. Um, you know, that's a little fancier than those kettle grills, but um, yep. you know, if, if if you ever get to looking for a grill that can do it all, green egg is definitely one of those. They're, they're uh, fantastic for low and slow cooking or for cooking up around seven, 800 degrees. Man, they get up there. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a, a cook, but I'm a good eater. And I know anytime I have food that's coming off those green eggs, no matter what it is, it's usually pretty dang good. I don't know that I've ever had a, a bad experience with respect to that. All right, what about, I guess, the sauces and the marinating and all that stuff? Kind of what's your favorites there? Well... I, you know, I, I usually try to keep my flavors pretty simple, Gerard. Um, I, I just like to taste the meat. So if you give me a decent barbecue seasoning or just some salt and pepper and garlic, I'm good to go. Uh, I okay. use the grill with, with, some, with some smoke, with some wood and some charcoal to give me some, you know, barbecue flavor. And then I let the meat shine by keeping it simple on it. Um, you know, sometimes I'll baste or marinate a little bit, but, but you just can't hardly beat salt, pepper, garlic when it comes to making good barbecue. Interesting. So I got a question here for you on the C Spire text line, Malcolm. Uh, ask him if you were going to buy a pellet grill, which one do you like? Well, uh, I'm, I'm kind of partial to the Traegers, man. They've got an Ironwood model, the 885, and I believe that's the best pellet grill on the market right now. Um, hmm. The controller works fantastic on it. It's insulated. You can cook low on it. You can cook up high on it, and it holds a lot of food, uh, you know. Yeah, awesome. We got a text from Curtis and Biloxi. He says he's a pellet grill man himself as well. So uh, so did you compete in the Memphis in May? We did. We were in the rib division. Uh, we came in sixth place overall in the world. So we were, wow. we were really thrilled about that. We got to walk the stage this year when it was all said and done. Uh, we finished uh, tied for first in the exotic category. Uh, at Memphis and May, they have a they have one full day where it's different stuff other than barbecue. Uh, what you think ribs, whole hog, shoulder? Um, they yeah. have you know you can do chicken, you can do seafood, you can do beef, you can do exotic, which can be anything out of the ordinary. So we did. Yeah. Uh, uh, our, our buddies down at Mossy Oak in, in West Point sent me some bison ribeye, and we cooked those up and turned them in at Memphis and May, and we tied for first with those. So we were really excited. Wow, that is awesome. And, uh, I mean, that's impressive that you would uh, place that high. That's really incredible. Congratulations to you on that. We got uh, one of our listeners, Chris the Mailman, says that your seasoning can be purchased at Kroger. Is that true? Yes, sir. Kroger Delta. They have them in all the Krogers in Mississippi, I think. So we're, we're, we're yeah, excited my, my, about that. Wow. Malcolm, I want to tell you, my wife loves that AP seasoning. Um, she goes through it. Uh, I can't tell you how many she's bought. But since you dropped some off here for JT one time, and he was kind enough to hand it to me, and I went home, gave it to her, and she goes through that stuff. Well, we got a, a Adam and Baldwin says he picked up a bottle of the seasoning at the Bucky's truck stop. He's ready to try it out this weekend. How about that? <laughs> that salt, that AP is that salt, pepper, garlic I was talking about, man. You I'm can't go wrong with it. Okay, well, I'm going to trust you. All right, what about availability? We just got a, a minute here about availability of, of meats and any of the other ingredients and stuff. Are you having any problems with that, or does that seem to kind of have stabilized? Well, here in Mississippi, we've been doing just fine. There was a shortage on chicken wings for a little bit, but I think they got okay. that figured out. But uh, as far as beef and pork go, we, we you know our stores, we haven't had any uh, trouble here uh, in the north part of the state. 
Wow, that's awesome. Well, congratulations uh, to you, Malcolm, and you're indeed a Mississippi treasure. We appreciate you joining us today, man. 